can we go back for a moment for the uh, graph you were referring to and just sure, see the intensity yeah. on the side, as you mentioned? Yeah, this, this shows you what, you know, this is what you're doing as you do it. You, you're writing little sort sentences and you're putting hyphens and then you're drawing a line connecting them all. But then when you put it on the side, you can see the shape of your story. And you can see where it needs some attention. You know, where the, you know, there is all these peaks here, but no real valleys. So it would be much more dramatic if you dropped some of the intensity or you added less intense scenes in here so that the rises would be greater, et cetera. And, you know, it could be that everything is just fine when you do this and it looks really perfect, but most of the time you'll discover that it's not a roller coaster ride, which is what you want, you know, your reader to go on. You want them to, to be screaming all the time, basically. And then toward the end, you see the highest peak, and then it levels down. Yeah, so it levels like, down, mm -hmm. although, you know, in today's storytelling world, maybe this is not the right way to end the story. Hmm. You know, it might be better to end on a higher peak. Oh, okay. You and that's have, Jaws? Sorry. No, no, this is, this is just a, a made-up story that we use as an example here. Yeah. So, but, but you should. That, I mean, that's just like my client, Millie Meyer, outlined The Grapes of Wrath. You sit, sit down with a movie like Jaws or like The Meg that's coming out in August uh, from Warner Brothers and, and chart it. And, and you'll see how conscious the story is uh, of these ups and downs. I mean, people, th they know what they're doing. Directors are known for their ability to do that. And if you want, you know, you want a crazy all out screaming ride uh, go see Lara Croft or one of the James Bond movies and you'll you'll see that that's that's what they try to deliver to you and if you want a more tempered ride where you can get deeper into the story because you have a moment to rest between peaks then you'll see an, another kind of story sorry I cut you off but you were saying that today's peaks might end a little higher would that be because of there's a possibility of a sequel or... Yeah, I mean, usually it's, it's that. And it's also because we are, to, ever since the moment that Star Wars hit the screens, I'll never forget that moment because when I watched that movie, I thought, this is a watershed in the history of movies. We will never look at movies the same way again because the scenes were the shortest scenes I've ever seen. You know, the scenes before that probably averaged two to three minutes. But when in Star Wars, the scenes seemed like they lasted six seconds or 10 seconds, and you could not see everything in the scene, which made you instantly fall in love with the movie because you believed in the world if it was so chock full of stuff you couldn't see at all, you just have to go see it again. And, and I thought, this is brilliant. And it was a foreshadowing of the attention span that we are now fully living with. We weren't quite there yet when it came out, it was a little ahead of its time, but it totally predicted the world we live in now where our attention span is just minute because we're being bombarded by so many pieces of information from so many directions. We're distracted all the time. And, you know, the text is ringing, the phone is ringing, the, the email is ringing, you know, our, our head is ringing. Our eyes are buzzing from, you know, somebody said Americans look at 52,000 commercials every day in a normal day. And I think that's true. I mean, if, assuming you commute to work and you're looking at everything out there, uh, buses going by, you know, billboards, et cetera. So I think that um, there's another example of a filmmaker who understood the audience psychology and who directly addressed it, who directly addressed that that's what he's all about is grabbing your psychology and playing with it and you love it because nobody's done that to you before nobody's nobody was making movies that you had to immediately go see again because you wanted to see what that little gizmo was in the in the far corner that you didn't happen to focus on and now the scene's over and you're all to another scene and you miss that so you got to go back and train your eye to watch for that corner and you know how that is you you're always thinking next time i watch it i'm going to really watch this corner or some, this corner because I know I don't have a chance to see it all. And th that is really screwing with the psychology of the audience. I love that. 